everyone. Well, it's been a little while since I've done a podcast and uh, apologies about that. I've been busy trying to get um, stuff sorted for Woolly Mammoth, but I am back for another episode. So here we go. <laughs> um, uh, I'm Emma, if you didn't know that already, and this is mainly a podcast about knitting and stuff and other things sometimes. Um, so I'll show you some of my whips, some of my FOs, some of my little projects, shall we say. So the first one, I'll just start straight in with the works in progress. So um, where will I start? I'll start on my Kume cardigan. This is a pattern by Vanessa Palisa. And it's a wee bit wrinkly, but I haven't got very far on it since the last time I don't think. I think it was probably knitting the collar on the last bit. Um, really like the colour of this. Um, and this is one where you stick, which I haven't done before. I'm considering, well, I was thinking about possibly ripping this out because I think I should have knitted it in something slightly hairier. I'm learning more and more that for garments I really like um, like woolen spun yarn or slightly hairier yarn just because I feel like it's warmer. This is uh, knit in my natural sock DK. Um, and I actually, well, it works okay for this project. It's not that it doesn't work well, but I think it would work better on a sweater where, I don't know, something more plain maybe. Just like stock in it, a really simple like raglan. I think it would really suit, like this yarn would really suit that. And I just feel like this, because it's almost a jacket, would suit something a little bit more hairy. I dyed this with nettles, if you haven't watched my previous podcast episodes. And um, it was my first cable project and it might be my first steak project. Um, if I don't rip it out, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Um, it's a tiny bit long, but my husband said, oh, that'll be good for the winter. Um, yeah, I don't know. I do really like the project. So I think if I ripped this out, I'd probably knit it again in one of my other bases potentially. But yeah, so this is kind of at a standstill, even though I've like almost finished it. I should probably just um, go for it. And then even if I don't like to wear it, I can maybe keep it for a sample or give it to my mother-in-law, who I actually think would really like it. I hope she doesn't watch this. Um, Cause it's pretty much the perfect size for her as well. So yeah, Mira, if you're watching this, just look away. <laughs> Pretend you didn't hear that. Um, so that is one work in progress. Another one is to actually I have two new casts on since the last episode, which is kind of cool. I um I've cast on this little um now this is kind of special because it's for uh, my little niece who is two, and I had a few random leftover balls of. Let Lope. This is one of my favourite yarns. Um, I've used it in quite a lot of projects and therefore I had a few random balls of a few random different colours left over. So I decided, okay, I've been wanting to knit a little sweater or cardigan for my niece for ages and haven't done it yet. So I decided, okay, I'm just going to go for it with this. So I'll show you my, I'm very organised today, um, my little swatch board. This one is my gauge swatch for the uh, Let Lope. The colour was, I'm just using a bunch of random different colours, but this one's like a dark grey. And what I did was I cast on with four millimetre needles and knitted this gauge swatch in the round. Um, if you don't know how to do this, there's, there's uh, loads of videos on YouTube. Um, and then what I did was I measured with a measure and tape, uh, 15 centimetres. How many stitches per, how many stitches are in 15 centimetres and how many are in an inch? And um, then I calculated according to her uh, dimensions. Can a person have dimensions? Her measurements. <laughs> uh, um, what size her cardigan should be. So 
this is quite mathematical for me. I was quite happy with myself being able to figure this out. So yeah, once you figure out the stitches per inch and you know how many inches the cardigan has to be, you just multiply. It's actually quite simple. Um, so I had four stitches per inch and I needed it to be 14 and a half inches wide. So I cast on 50, 58 stitches, I think. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so basically it's going to have, this is actually, I'm into my second colour of grey. You can probably just about see it here. This is it here. And then I will go to the third colour of grey, which is this one. And then I think uh, I will do the arms in this colour. And um, I'm still, obviously I'm still in the body. I haven't exactly decided how I will how I'll do the, um, that's not a top for there. <laughs> um, how I'll do the sleeves, whether or not I will do a uh, raglan or whether I'll do some sort of yoked thing or whether I'll just knit to the, the underarm and then knit in the flat and then do a three needle wind, three needle bind off and then pick up the stitches for the arms. I don't know, I think. Just a nice chunky raglan would look really cool in this. So that's actually what I've drawn in my little picture. So <laughs> that's what I'm aiming for anyway. And we'll see how that goes. Um, I really enjoy knitting uh, sweaters and jumpers and I've never knitted one for a small person. So um, this is quite interesting because I'm it's quite fast and you get to just try out things which is cool and I just left the bottom hem rolled and when I block it, it should just have a small roll which I think will look nice I might do the same thing at the um, neck and the cuffs so I'm pleased with how that's going so far oh and I know someone's gonna ask me what this color is um, it's nine four two seven zero one four five So that is that. Um, I cast on another pair of socks, but I made a bit of a mistake with this. So this is oops, a scrappy pair of socks. Um, just using up my natural sock, little bits of leftover. I'm knitting them using Haya Haya. I don't know if they're sharps or not, but they're Haya Haya and they're 1.75 millimeters. Um, Cause well you might know I have this whole thing about gauge and socks and I'm kind of exploring um, that and natural socks and to see what um, kind of results I can get so um, I'm just kind of knitting each colour as, as long as I feel like but I made a little mistake I dropped a stitch here so I don't know I can't pick it up because there's nowhere to pick it up um, it's actually this is the inside um, it's just a three by one rib sock. See? So I don't know what to do about this, whether just to catch the stitch and sew it in and then increase another stitch here or whether to rip back. So I'm not sure what people normally do, but I would have caught it and, you know, if, if it was dropped from up here, but it dropped way back here. So there's no ladders to pick up to fix the problem. So those are just kind of in the bag and I'm deciding what to do with them next. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, I also have been working on the shawl design a little bit. Um, I had a lot of help from my friend Marina, who is a tech editor. Uh, she was giving me a few coaching sessions on how I should proceed next. So I'll just show you the shawl again I don't know if I've showed it for a while so as you can see there's like this bumpy bit in the middle so um, we basically decided that the best way to tackle this problem is because I'm increasing here but then I'm not increasing here is to have a section here where I also increase so I'm busy well I was busy making a little tests mini shawl tests so I did this one day 
think I did them both in the day actually. And just to see what it would look like if I made up like a wee lazy bit. But I think I've decided that I like the plain smaller one better. And so this will be inserted. Oops. I'm not very good at this. Oops. This will be, oh no. <laughs> this will be inserted into the shawl here. So it will just continue to flow nicely. So I'm going to be knitting another one of these um, before I go any further with the pattern. And um, we'll see how that goes. So yeah, I haven't got much time to work on this at the moment because I'm so busy with the um, advent calendars, which is exciting but tiring. Um, they are all sold out, so sorry about that, but I'm only one person and I can only do so much. I'm getting a little bit of help with them, otherwise I think it would be a bit much. Um, but so far we are on track for delivery at the start of October. Now don't hold me to that, I actually do hold me to that, <laughs> they need to go out then. Um, so yeah, so that's just a kind of side project that I'm kind of always working on, that shawl. Um, I don't know when it'll be out. I was gonna hopefully, I, I was hoping to have it out this autumn, but I don't think that's gonna happen. So might aim, I might aim for next autumn and <laughs> see how that goes. Um, I have enough testers for it and everything already. So I'm all sorted that way. Um, but I just need to, I just need to get a few free days, which are hard to come by at the moment. I can't remember in the last episode if I showed these socks. I've just knitted one of these. This is my natural sock. It was going to be a swatch and it ended up a sock. I just continued knitting. This was on 1.75 millimeter needles, but they were, the needles were Knit Pro, I think. 1.75 millimeter, but they were too bendy for my liking. So then I got the, the higher, higher ones and I, I there's, Still, but they're hollow in the middle so they're light and I think they're much better well in my opinion I don't really like flexible needles I think I've discovered I used to really like uh, like bamboo needles but now I don't think I like them anymore it's I don't really get as good attention with them um, I also started and finished a pair of these socks um, these were knitted in the heels toes and cuffs were knitted in um, Olan Jess Cavanagh's one of her naturally dyed yarns and the pink one is a Gregoria Fibers yarn. Um, so I'm just trying to work through some of the yarn that I have and just enjoy making it. Um, so I did that and I had to pick these off the washing pile to show you so you can see they're a wee bit dirty but um, they're going to get their first wash soon so I am... Um, Looking forward to wearing them again. The weather here has been really wet the whole month of July and then the last three days have been really nice and warm, which is so nice. The rain just seemed totally unrelenting. Like it just went on and on and on. Everything in the garden turned turned into like really mucky. Everything was so mucky. We couldn't even, we didn't want to go outside or anything or do any jobs outside and we had a lot of jobs to do outside. So yes, yeah, so, sorry. Um, so basically these will be really good for autumn. The last three days have been too warm to wear wool socks but the whole month of July was good for wearing wool socks because it totally felt like the autumn which was kind of interesting. Um, I also have a couple of kind of interesting things to show you. Um, I have been working with Jess, actually, um, of Olan, who has recently um, acquired a fibre mill. Um, it is in her workspace in Cavan and I went with my dad and the trailer down to her and we took a whole, I don't know how many different bases, or no, they're not bases, they're fleeces in big bags we took down to her. Um, and 
this year I got my cousin to help me pick out all the, do all the skirting of the fleeces. And I got my first samples back from Jess, so I just thought I would show you them in case you were interested. I hope to actually do a tour with her around the mill when I pick up my yarn, so we will see if that goes ahead. So this is a sneak peek into the future um, of what I might have in the shop. So these are two samples that she sent me. These are both of the same breed. This is Spotted Dutch and this comes from County Down, Northern Ireland. Uh, this is, this is like this. It's a two ply. Sorry, I should explain myself. This is a two fold yarn. So it's two strands plied together. It is a four ply or fingering weight yarn. Well, this one is, but the final product won't be, <laughs> which is another story, but anyway. Um, it's gonna it's gonna look like this color basically, which is really cool. And it's really, I didn't know much about the Spotted Dutch. Um, I had to do a little bit of research, didn't know what the fiber would be like. I never seen anyone selling it that I noticed before. So I just went for it anyway. Sometimes you just have to experiment a bit. And um, I really like it. I It has, it's actually not dissimilar to the, this is the Let Lope and this is the Spotted Dutch. It has those kind of little guard hairs and it's quite, I don't know. Obviously they're different weights and the Lope is singles, whereas my yarn is a two fold yarn. Um, but they're similar in some ways. Um, I also, this one here is also from Jess. So this is a little barber pole version of the Spotted Dutch, which is really, really beautiful. This is how it knits up here. So actually there's not a massive, see if I hold it like this, you might. It's just slightly lighter overall, I would say, um, than this. And it's just a very beautiful in the cake, I would say. So I think whenever these come back, they're probably going to be like a DK weight. Um, we don't know exactly yet. It just depends. But um, yeah, so this is the part of my job that I really, really enjoy. I really enjoy like designing the yarns and like thinking of ideas for different breeds and like taking them down to the Jess or sending them to the small mill. I sometimes work with them wheels and just like seeing what comes back. That's like the biggest part of the creative process for me. Um, and as well, I'm hoping to go into more naturally colored yarns um, just because they're really beautiful. And also there's quite a lot of them here. And also it's more sustainable um, business wise for me. It just means like I can get a little break from dying and I don't feel so overwhelmed with like doing that all the time. And also it's more sustainable for the environment just because you're not using as much water. So um, this is something that I hope in the future, I hope to always have a naturally colored yarn in the shop. I don't know if that'll always be possible. It depends on how long things take to come back to me. But my plan is to always either have a limited edition yarn or always have a naturally colored yarn in the shop. Um, me personally, I actually really, like even with the Lope, like you can see, this is what I like kind of gravitate towards in many ways. I really love the soft, soft colors of natural dyeing, but I also just really love the natural colors. Like this is for my shawl. This is also naturally colored. So um, I just really enjoy the natural sheepy colors and I hope you do too. Um, but yeah, so looking into the the rest of 2020 and the start of 2021, this is where I kind of hope to go a little bit. Um, that's not me saying that I'm going to stop dying. It just means that I'll be able to more easily just like take a little break if I need one um, or just expend my creative energies uh, in Megan yarn if I want to rather than die and die and die and all the time. Um, I also had a really cool little idea for a naturally dyed club next year. I'm not going to launch it for a while just because there's so much to do at the moment. Um, and 
yeah i'm not going to give away what it is just now so you can stay tuned for that um but yeah i think you're gonna like it uh i hope i hope so um so yeah that's pretty much what i've been up to um so that's why i don't always have loads of time for knitting doing my own personal knitting because i'm knitting swatches of this and swatches of that and i'm having conversations about how to change yarn and uh what sort of kind of look i want from the yarn so it's all very exciting and um i really enjoy it so it's good fun um talking about new yarns i thought i'd show you a few colors of my new limited edition base which is coming to the shop this wednesday i hope this episode goes out before then it is a mixture of Oh, I don't have a natural, the colour of it without dye, but I'll just show it to you anyway. This is a mixture of Dorset wool and alpaca. Um, the Dorset is from County Donegal, from one farm. And the alpaca is from County Tyrone. And this was spun in England. It's about 80% Dorset, 20% alpaca. So, uh, and it's wool and spun, it's a two-fold wool and spun and it is 370 metres per 100 grams and it's a four-ply finger and weight, although it's wool and spun so you'll probably notice that it's quite like plump. Be really, really good for colour work and um, did I say it was spun in England? So it's quite, I would say the dorset wool's not scratchy and it's not soft, like there's no guard hairs. It's quite like a middling kind of fibre, which is interesting. A good workhorse fibre, I would say. And obviously the alpaca adds a bit of softness, even more softness to it. Um, I think this would just be really good. I think basically any wool and spun yarn is really good for colour work, really good for garments really good for things that you need to keep you warm and I know loads of people can't knit with wool in the summer just because it's so warm but obviously here we don't really have that problem so I don't do any of this summer knitting nonsense I just continue with the winter knitting <laughs> the whole way through the summer <laughs> um, so yeah this is what I have come to the shop on Wednesday and uh, I'll just go through you a couple of the colours with you if you're interested um, and then I'll show you a couple of other things I have. So this is Jasmine. This is one of my regular colorways. This one is, the blue one is Indigo 3. This one at the end is Peach, one of a kind. So they look quite nice together. And then here we have Wildflower, nice purple one. Um, I'll set these down, show you these three. This one is an olive one of a kind. Again, all naturally dyed. A pink one of a kind too. I think this, these three would be great together. I love that. This is Jasmine. I just think that's a really cool mix. And this is Indigo One. Oops. Should maybe talk about the label a little bit actually. This label was designed by my friend Anna, who I lived with when I was at uni. She studied drawing and I got her to draw a little representation of um, Fanad Lighthouse in Donegal just because I thought it was a little bit like represent representative of the place where the Dorset wool comes from and yeah I quite like it. I think it's really good. She always does a great job. And here is a little, this one's dyed with onion skins, this one's called Daffodil. So that's all the limited edition. There's way more colours than that, but I'm not going to go through them all here. Um, but they will all come up like magic on the website on Wednesday night at 8 o'clock GMT. That's UK time. Um, okay, so I'll show you some of my natural socks. So in the last update, I had kind of run out of natural sock. I was waiting for an order to come in from the mill. So this update I've dyed quite a bit of it, 
so I have one new colour, I have some new sock sets and a few old colours. So um, I'll show you a couple of the sock sets. Um, I have a few different ones but um, they're at the bottom of the box so uh, I couldn't be bothered getting them out. <laughs> That's really bad isn't it? Um, so this is Natural Sock Set 5. This is Natural Socks at 4, 120 grams in this total. And this one is Natural Socks at 2. So this is like the first one but with a white mini. Jasmine actually. That's that. Um, an old colour that I brought back, forget, well not old, I just don't dye it much. It's called Forget Me Not. And I have a new colour because it's been raining here so much I decided to dye up a colour that was called Sun After Rain just because it's been so wet and I just was really hoping for a sunny day or two. So this is what it looks like. It's just like a really gentle kind of very lightly, I wouldn't say speckled but it's a very different colours in it. The main colour I would say is purpley, purpley kind of colour. So that's what that's like. <clears throat> so I think that's everything I have to show you today. Yep. Um, I hope you like my organisation <laughs> of my boards <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed this episode and um, I hope to see you again sometime and I'll put any information about stuff below you can find it in the description bit so yeah hope to see you next time and happy knitting everybody <laughs>